welcome back to another video what I'm gonna be doing is another behind the scenes look here as we edit some troops and I'll tell I'll tell you a little bit about how I got this set up so first thing I want to do is change some troops so something I learned is you can't really give every soldier a shield especially these bowmen or bowwomen because they will they will hold their shield and spear instead of pulling out their bow or if you got pikemen um, they won't get into into a formation uh, spear bait spear brace formation if you have a, a shield they just won't do it because they'd rather they would rather hold hold it one-handed and have the shield handy so what I'm gonna do is take off the shields because what I did was I had shield and spear with a bow for my my bow Amazons here but they're not using their arrows basically they're just standing there with their shields and spears in their hands So what I'm going to do is take away all the shields and these are low tier so low tier so I'm going to give them just regular arrows I did this quite a while ago when I first got my little warband so I went, a, I went a little excessive and like gave too many items to everybody not every character needs to have every slot filled as far as items go so all the mods are in the description if anybody wants to try and do a playthrough similar to this I can help you get set up you just hit me up in the comments I got the load order and the mod as well as the, ver the version. What you do is when you go to downloads, you go through the older downloads and you match up the, ver the variation and that will be guaranteed to work if you're playing on the same version as me, which is 1.03. That almost seems unreal because now we're at, I think we're at 1.3.0 1 coming up when I started this we were on like 1.6 something but what I did was I was playing on console but then when it came to modding I wanted to do something different so this was actually the first mod I had was GT carbon body I wanted to change the female troops so, so what I did was I found the version that worked with this mod and then I started building from there and I only intended to play for a little while because I was almost sure it was gonna crash at some point right but it never did crash on me and I'm still playing and I notice other people are probably getting ready to restart again but I am missing out on some of the features but I've gained so much that I'm not too too worried about what Tale, Tale Worlds has been up to. So anyway, we got some of those fixed. Let me think here what else I was going to be doing. And look at some of these other troops. There is definitely some more changes I would like to make. Like some new shields. Like one thing that kind of bothers me is when everybody has the same logo on their shield.
I'm gonna give this guy his own unique shield. These are all like Greek and Roman type ones. These ones here are custom, which means they won't change the logo. Skull Medusa. None of them really seem like they'd fit this guy. Maybe there's an Elden Ring shield. Yeah, here we go. Twin bird kite shield. I think that one will work. I'm gonna go to my fellowship troop tree if I can find it. So the fellowship tree is like my tier 6 tree, whoops. And my Amazon tree is my tier 5. Custom troops and I can still recruit like all the other soldiers too. And so uh, if you wanted to do this playthrough, what you do is you load your sandbox first and then you... Afterwards you load My Little Warband, you cannot start your sandbox with My Little Warband, if that makes sense. All the other mods seem to work, but that one, you can't create your character, your starting character with my little warband, um, what do you call it, active in your mod list. So you untick it, and then, um, and then start your game, and then you can tick it your next time after you got your character created, save your game, exit, load my little warband and then you can start creating these custom troops. My dog's here beside me making some noise so you guys might be able to pick up on that on the mic but is what it is. Now what did I want to do here? Ah yes it was some of these shields. This guy. I'm gonna make it so he's got no no regular shield, so they're gonna have all Elden Ring types. This is the only um, negative side to having lots of item imports is you gotta do some scrolling when you're looking for something. I just want my shield wall to look a little more unique. When you got like, when everybody's got their shield painted the same, it kinda, it, it makes the shield wall look kinda dull. So some of these modded ones there, they don't change with the banner. Let's try that one there. And I don't, I don't necessarily try to be perfect with any of them. These guys are like, they're just fantasy troops. Like this is like a, a mythological Viking type guy. You see, he's got this this bowl thing. Basically, I just kind of got carried away and just wanted to make troops for fun. Like, I don't know if you guys remember your first time modding. It's easy to get out of control and just create things just to see what works and, you know, different things like that. 
So basically, what you do is all you do is open up the troop tree, right? And you hold shift, click, and then it opens up this and you can change all this stuff. And look at this is upgrades to upgrades from. So this is the, the first tier. This is the first um, guy that you level up. He starts at tier two and he branches into these two guys. So you can just click under that. This is the next um, part of the tree and then he branches into these two. And basically, once you get to the end, you can just click to add one. And it'll add a new, a new section and you can create it from scratch. You can change everything you want. It's good to use these things, otherwise you'll be scrolling all day. Let's change one more shield and then move on to something else. that once we open it up again it should change that will look a little bit better but I'll go through and change some more later so on the smithy you know I got I've unlocked all the vanilla items, but basically I gotta unlock all the the other ones on my own. <clears throat> That's actually something I wish I didn't do, was give myself unlimited smithing as well as unlocking all the parts, but I guess I got more carried away with like, with adding mods, just to see what I could get away with. Like I said, I kind of I got Bannerlord on console, so so this is kind of like my whole my complete overhaul with modded with modded playthrough. And basically, I tried to make it no stress. It's just me whipping ass and you know doing everything Bannerlord with no restrictions on my character. Oh, that's one thing we can do. Let's go look at some leveling up. So as you can see here, look, everything, this is how my character started. Which seems like that's taken away a lot of the game, and it really does, but what I could do is I could change my leader and start playing on a, on a different character at any time. And so because I'm Hercules, I wanted a overpowered character. Let's look at somebody brand new, Robin Hood. So basically they will not level up on anything, like if I don't equip a one-handed sword then he's not going to get better here, but he's got maximum potential right off the bat. So my companions are, are actually overpowered, completely overpowered, and that's kind of the point. And it's meant to be more of like a Diablo type playthrough or, or Elden Ring or whatever you want to call it because people have fire arrows people have you know uh, magic what do you call it magic spells and uh, fire swords and different things like that I think Robin Hood will be a wood chopper and he's got a claymore so Give him that one. Gonna make him a little bit like Braveheart with his Claymore. Shield 
Breaker. And see, because he's a bowman, he's leveling up with his bow here as well. And the reason I went for the quick leveling up is because, once again, like I had no idea how long this was going to last. So I just kind of wanted to get everything happening, get the ball rolling really quick. Dead aim. Increase your headshot damage. So sometimes I use these characters, but I gotta think about them as what's gonna be best as a companion. What's gonna what's gonna help his character. So I'm not trying to make like the best the best overall character, but you know to the to the the fictional character of Robin Hood we need him to be like you know as a companion we need him to have deadly bow skills and not think about like how it's gonna be for me to play him although I may get a chance to use him once in a while so this would be better for me but I don't know necessarily that it helps for the computer the AI when they're playing Swiftness, but I'll give him the swiftness. Rapid fire, because rapid fire is going to be more useful as a companion. I don't know how good their accuracy actually is and how these skills affect AI, so I'm just going to go with my gut on some of these. I always go for speed with most of my characters. it off and basically I gotta get caught up on all my characters it becomes a lot of work leveling them up but once in a while I'll just go through and do as many as I can A lot of these guys may end up with their own kingdoms. <clears throat> so I gotta keep different things in mind, what they're gonna be used for. Look at that, nobody nobody expects George Washington and Robin Hood to be waiting in the woods for him during a uh <laughs> during a, a war in, in the field. But I got this interesting group of like freedom fighters and of course like a lot of these like video game characters the Amazons are all fake none of the Amazons are based on anybody real and what I do is if <clears throat> if I do make any like real uh, female characters I won't uh, put them in clothes like this let me see if I can find one Joan of Arc, Rani of Jhansi. This armor is not accurate to her era. She would have actually had well, no armor because her her battle happened after, I believe, after the Napoleonic Wars. She fought against the English, but they were doing castle sieges at that time. And and so what I did was, not only do I got all these historical characters, but I got like the people they faced from those eras and other other military leaders on the other teams like you know Alexander the Great and Napoleon, Attila the Hun, Genghis Khan. I decided not to recruit any of them. Let's see what else we could really muck around with here.
go through some of my my troops here of course there's Hercules but what I do is I make something that makes them recognizable on the battlefield but not I ain't going for this historically accurate BS and that's got to be one of the most annoying comments is people complaining about the armor not matching this and why is Sun Tzu fighting next to Achilles and you know that armor's not proper what's he doing with that shield and uh, that's got to be the lamest crap that I could hear because it's a fantasy game most games most movies get it wrong anyway and so for people to think that I have to match their idea and their their the version they pick in their mind when it comes to samurai and knights and these different things is wild to me because it's a completely fantasy thing and I just mix and match it and I try to get things sort of recognizable you know like here's crazy horse would actually have no armor at all but I gave him a little something otherwise he's gonna get taken out right away so it's kind of like a mix between giving him something recognizable and giving them something functional so they're not going to be dying all the time on the field and you know Joan of Arc here is one of the most recognizable with her she actually carries a banner here she's a pretty accurate character at least for a video game or a fantasy game Arthur's been completely Elden ringed out because uh, I needed him to be a little tougher be able to withstand some punishment so he got the the Elden Ring gear is just far superior Leonidas got Link who's kind of like our version of Legolas and don't be commenting that that's not the real Hyrulean sword and you know that's not his real clothes because I'm gonna just have to block you <laughs> if that's possible <laughs> uh, let's see here where's Maximus kind of got a mix of different gear once again I just wanted him to be recognizable like so when I'm cruising on the battlefield I can look over and say oh look there's Merlin I can recognize the Griffin He's basically like our Gandalf. There's Perseus. Rania Jonsi, Oda, Nobunaga. I don't know much about this guy, but I do know that he's a famous samurai. So as far as the era, I didn't consider that, I just I just wanted to give him a, a cool samurai get up. And all these Amazons are just uh, you know they're just they're just random Amazons that I can equip with uh, enchanted bows and different things. That's what most of them have. They're mostly mage mage archers. Basically, I can have endless companions, but I've only got like 40 at the moment. I, I try to keep it within the limits of the game. I don't want like a whole army of them. It would be too much. I just gave um, Braveheart this. This is obviously from a Highlander. But you see what, what he's, he's in a full, what would I call it? fantasy type gear so he's got some Elden Ring stuff but the helmet and the sash here are actually I tried to match up from his this isn't like this isn't actually a, a Scottish helmet but it if you look up one of the old drawings of William Wallace he wears a helmet kind of similar to that and the Braveheart movie was completely wrong he fought in more than just a mullet 
Um, they actually had chain mill, they had some plate. So then they made them like these wild barbarians who just wore mullets and sashes, but they actually had quite a bit of armor. Here's my, probably my toughest companion at the moment. Yeah, pretty random mix. I, I got some more characters that I'm planning on adding eventually, but just got a whole lot going on with the, with the whole thing at the moment. I gotta finish leveling up some of these characters before I make some more. But anyways, I just wanted to uh, do a little video and chat about what's going on. But what I, I decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick to just gameplay and music. And about every five episodes, I'm gonna do a behind the scenes where I do some talking. I might break down strategy. I might break down some of the behind the scenes editing on how I set up this playthrough. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Maybe I'll throw it in on the next behind the scenes. And some people were complaining like, you know, some people will say, why is no talking? Um, other people get angry when I do talk because they don't want to hear my stupid voice or whatever but the reality is there's plenty of these episodes if there's something you don't like just click to the next one I'm going to try to figure out like a format but I've been winging it so I've been trying some new things and basically my channel hasn't been getting a lot of views or engagement, so I don't got a whole lot to lose. But if you're just going to comment to complain, I'm going to just hit thumb down, thumbs down and ignore it. Because, it, I, mean, I mean, like, you know, complaining in the comments is... Leaving construct, constructive criticism is one thing, but just complaining is like... It's just irritating. But anyways... I've been going on a little too long, so thanks for watching. Catch you all next time.